morning. Well, you guys got to be louder than that because we are, we got a lot of people who are on the holiday break. So let's try it one more time. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, there we go. That was okay, wasn't it? All right. So we're good to go. I'm glad you're joining us here over the uh, holiday weekend. Um, so hoping and praying that you have a safe holiday. And uh, of course, you remember all those who have given of their lives uh, so that we could be in worship, that we can um, have our freedoms that we have today. So this morning, a couple of announcements, and we're going to start off the announcements um, with Dana because she is right here, ready to go. So we're going to turn it over to you. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to lift up on the very back of your bulletin. Um, next Sunday, we are having it. It's Rally Sunday where we will recognize all of the Sunday school students that are advancing to the next level. Um, we will be recognizing any graduates within the congregation. And I wanted to let you know that we are going to have a reception after worship that day um, because our very own Pastor Wayne is one of our graduates. And Pastor Wayne has completed course of study, so that is a required um, courses that he has been taking over, I think, 13 years, they said. It's equivalent to a master's degree, so we are very proud of him. And um, please join us next Sunday after worship to help celebrate Pastor Wayne and all of those that are moving forward. Thank you. Good morning. Today I have some Bible school announcements. First of all, if you are interested in donating towards the food that will be consumed, then the sign-up sheet is over there on the table, and that will remain there until it's filled up. So today, those of you who are here, get first dips on that if you would like to donate in that way. Also, I wanted to make an announcement that... Sunday school is going to take a break during the summer, and my understanding is that that's been the history of Hebrew United Methodist Church, to take the summer off. Last year, we didn't, but this year we are. So Sunday school will be on hiatus. However, we will still have children's church during, um, during the sermon time. We've been taking off the first Sunday so that all kids and adults can be a part of communion. We feel like that's really important. So Children's Church will still be a, will still have that during the second, third, and fourth Sundays of the month. And that announcement will run in the bulletin during June, just as a reminder. And then we will pick it back up in mid-August. Thanks. All right, so the only other announcement left on my sheet is VBS training, uh, which will be June 4th at 6 p.m. Uh, they're going to be training for station leaders and helpers, so put that on your calendar. Uh, we are in that season to get ready for Vacation Bible School. Um, I have no other announcements, so let's begin with our opening prayer this morning. Holy God, source of all goodness, you gave your Son for the life of the world. And sent your spirit that your love might abide within us. Teach us how to love each other this day, that we may have life and have it abundantly with you in Christ and through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So please watch this opening video uh, to begin our worship this morning.
tomorrow is Memorial Day when we honor those who have given the supreme sacrifice for us, for our freedoms and for our love of this country that we have. And so I would ask that as we remember all of those who have fallen, uh, let's uh, take a moment of silent prayer uh, for them and for their families who still today weep and mourn over the loss of their loved ones. Oh, man. Just for your uh, information, I will be speaking at the Thayer uh, Memorial Service that will be held tomorrow at 1130 uh, down in Thayer. And it's to honor uh, one of uh, Rose Lawn's um, local boys who uh, jumped on D-Day uh, there in Operation Overlord. So uh, please, if you want to come and hear a little bit more about sacrifice that was made uh, by him as he was killed in action um, later in that year as he um, helped to liberate Holland. So, uh, so please, please come if you, if you would like to hear that magnificent story about a local boy who was there. So join me for our call to worship this morning. Great is the Lord. God's grace is beyond our understanding. Yet God has revealed God's self in Jesus Christ. Lift up your hearts and praise the Lord. May God continue to bless God's people with peace. Amen. So we begin with our hymn, uh, and we'll begin with the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and then Blessed Assurance. So please stand as we sing.
forward for the children's message? You what? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I got to ask what happened there? You fell. I'm sorry. Wow, how long you have to wear that? When it gets better? <laughs> Hopefully not too long. Well, sorry to hear that. So, here we go. You guys ready? You got to be really, really loud, so because we've got lots of folks who are missing. So, good morning. Good morning! You know what? You were louder than they were. Yeah, so good job. Excellent job. So how many of you listen to your mom and dad all the time? You do exactly what they tell you to do. How many of you do that? Oh, we got one brave soul who put up their hand, and I'm not going to mention any names. <laughs> you, come on, come on. Yeah, you do, you don't, we don't do everything, right? There was a time in my life where I didn't do everything that I was supposed to do. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, the congregation's like, no, that's, that's pretty much Pastor Wayne. So what happened was, my dad told me, I want you to do this. I want you to go out and feed the chickens. Yeah, we had chickens. So, I had, so he said, go out and feed the chickens. I want you to make sure they have enough water. I want you to close the gate. And then you'll be done with that task. That's all you have to do today. I'm like so excited. So I did it. I went out, I fed the chickens, I made sure they had water, and all was good. What? I didn't close the gate? I forgot to close the gate. So we were sitting at dinner that afternoon, late afternoon, and we had this big picture window in front of the, the kitchen table. And my dad sat so he could look out that picture window and he saw a chicken walk by. He didn't say anything. Then he saw a second chicken walk by. And then a third and then a fourth. And he put his fork down and he came over to where I was sitting and got down right in my face and he said, did someone forget to close the gate to the chicken coop? Yeah. I did. It was my fault. I didn't do everything I was supposed to do, so I got in trouble. I know. It's hard to believe, but I did. I got in trouble. And I never forgot to do everything that my dad told me to do after that. So, but Jesus tells us today in the scripture to go out and do something, to tell others about him, about what he has done and the things that he has done. And the good news of Jesus Christ is what he's trying to, to tell his disciples to go out and tell others. And so he tells them, just, just go out and do it. Go and do, and do what I ask you to do. So do you think the disciples did what they were told to do? Yes, they did. They did. And we have that because we read about that in the Bible, that what they did after that. So just remember, when your parents tell you to do something, make sure you do all of the things that they tell you to do, just like Jesus tells us to go out and tell others about him. All right? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever get the chickens back? Yes, yes. I had to go out and round up the chickens. And, um, yeah, we had a count. And uh, I am proud to say that I got them all. It took me six, seven hours, but, <clears throat> but we won't talk about that. We won't. And it was dark and scary, and was I a chicken? Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. You should need to be up here, right here next to me. Yeah, was I a chicken? That's good. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us directions that we should go out and tell others about your magnificent love and your grace and your mercy 
and all the miracles that you performed and how you just loved people for who they were. So Lord, help us to follow the directions that our parents give us, our teachers, our pastor. Um, and Lord, help us to, to love you and spread your word to others. And we say this in your precious name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful holiday weekend. Eat lots of hot dogs with Utz potato chips. Yeah. Utz potato chips. You don't know what those are? Badger your parents to have you get some Utz potato chips. So I'm a popular man now. So joys and concerns. Um, I have not been given any, but I think we need to keep in prayer all those who are traveling who are on vacation this week. We have a lot of uh, folks here from the church who are uh, celebrating elsewhere, and we want to be in prayer for them and uh, make sure that they have a safe return trip back here to Hebron, uh, wherever they might be. And we also pray for all those who are suffering, the remembrance of loved ones who uh, have been lost in the past to um, being in wars. So as we begin our time of prayer, let us sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come and worship, but most of all, we thank you for those who have sacrificed their lives in the past so that we can come and worship, so we have that freedom of religion. Lord, we thank you for this church, and we thank you for the ministries that we have that are ongoing and those that are in the hearts and the minds ready to come. Lord, we thank you for this great nation that we live in, that we have a day set aside to remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice of their lives. We thank you for those who are elected and appointed over us. Lord, we ask that you give them wisdom and guidance and direction. And most of all, we pray that they seek you before they make any and all decisions. Lord, we thank you for our police, fire, EMS, and conservation officers, all who are on duty to respond to our cries for help. And so, Lord, we ask for their protection, especially on this weekend, a very busy weekend as people are traveling and moving from different areas and people are celebrating. So, Lord, just be with them and protect them and guide them. Be with our medical professionals, Lord, as they continue to heal us and you have given them the knowledge and the skills and abilities that they need in order to do that. And so, Lord, we ask for their protection on this weekend also as they are working and they are still there to help when they are needed. Lord, we pray for our school corporation employees as the end of the school year is rapidly approaching. We ask that you be with them and the students and guide and protect them in all things and in all ways. We thank you for graduations 
We thank you for promotions. Lord, they are new beginnings and new ways to start. And so we ask that you be with all those who will be celebrating through open houses and uh, different get-togethers with their families and friends. Lord, we also thank you for successful tests and surgeries and procedures. We thank you for your healing touch. But Lord, through that, we, we do have issues. We have problems. And we have worry and doubt. We have fear and anxiety. We have anger, frustration. Lord, sometimes we can't forgive that person who hurt us. And so, Lord, this morning, we, we lift all these up to you. We pray that your will be done. We also pray that you work in a mighty and powerful way in our hearts and our minds and the hearts and minds of others. Lord, we pray for those who couldn't be with us today who are ill, who are in pain, and who are suffering. And we ask that you help heal their bodies and restore them. We pray for those in the hospital, in the nursing home, or who are homebound, and we ask that you wrap your loving arms around them and let them feel our prayers. And let them feel your grace and your love and your mercy. So Lord, be with us as we continue to worship you and lift your name up in praise. And as a scripture, scripture speaks to us. So Lord, be with us in this place and in this time. As we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's now time to continue our worship with our tithes and offerings. And so hear this invitation to the offering. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that all who love him may have life eternally. With loving hearts, let us bring our offerings to God. Amen. So will the ushers please come forward and take up our tithes and offerings this morning. God, your love overflows in the gift of your spirit. Bless these gifts that we offer, that they may spread your blessing in a world of hurt and need. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated, and we will sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. <laughs>
scripture reading today comes from Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded to you or commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. One of my favorite uh, episodes of the Andy Griffith Show uh, is an episode entitled Man in a Hurry. And it's about this man who comes from the big city and his car breaks down on a Sunday uh, late morning in Mayberry. And of course, nothing is open. And nobody is working because it's Sunday, it's the Sabbath. And he can't get his car fixed. And so he is in a hurry to get to his next appointment in a bigger town. And he has no desire to stay in Mayberry. And so Andy uh, and Barney try to do the best they can to help him out and talk with different people in the town. They finally get uh, Gomer to, to help him out. And Gomer's not a mechanic, but his, his cousin Goober is. And so cousin Goober starts to work on his car. So he's staying at Andy's house, the man in the hurry. And at one point, he decides that, okay, I'm going to be here for a little bit. I might as well enjoy it. But then he gets word from Gomer that they can fix his car. They know what's wrong with it, and they can have it ready in just a few minutes. And so the man is on the front porch with Andy and Barney. And Andy and Barney are sitting there just relaxing after that Sunday dinner, that Sunday lunch, and just not really saying a lot. You know how it used to be? where you sat on the front porch. But the man in a hurry is pacing like a caged animal on that front porch, smoking a cigar. He is ready to go. He is ready to leave town. And so here's the conversation that happens. Barney's sitting there, and he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go home. I'm going to take a nap, and then I'm going to go over to Thelma Luz and watch TV. Man is pacing back and forth. Andy doesn't say anything. A few minutes later, Barney says the same thing. He goes, yep. He says, you know, I think I'm going to go home. I'm going to take a nap. And then go to Thelma Luz to watch TV. The man's pacing back and forth. Andy doesn't say anything. A few minutes later, Barney does it again. He says, well, I think, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go home. And the man in a hurry stops and he says, do it! Just do it for the love of Mike! Go! Go home, take a nap, go to Thelma Luz, watch TV, just do it. And then he begins to pace again. And Barney goes, wow, what's, what's eating at him? And he gets up and he leaves to go home to take a nap. But I think that's, you know, what a great episode. About not slowing down and, and just appreciating where you are and the people that are surrounding you. But it's more about that, that the man says, just do it. Just go and do it. And I think Jesus in the scripture, he's telling, finally, he's telling the disciples, just go and do it. And he tells them this in verse 19, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So he gives us this command. He gives them this command to go out and to make disciples of all nations. 
And I have to think that if he was in today's church, if Jesus was here today, and I'm not just saying our church, but even other churches, the American church, and he said, hey, I want you guys to go out and make disciples of Jesus Christ, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything. I think this is what would happen. The first thing they would say is, well, we need to have an administrative council meeting about that. Because there's some issues that we need to address. I think we need to have a committee to decide how are we going to baptize these people? Who are we going to baptize? We need another committee in order to address who are the people that we are supposed to go out and teach this to. Another committee to decide what are we going to teach them about. And then another committee to address this whole idea of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? This Trinity. What? We, we have to have classes. We have to have something going on. So I would say that we kind of throw up roadblocks in order to, to do what Jesus has commanded us to do. And it's, and it's pretty simple. Just do it. The man in a hurry tells us that. Just do it. Go out and baptize. Tell people about Jesus. You know, we get so hung up on all the different doctrines and theology. What happened to just being Jesus to people? Loving them and caring for them and telling them about him and how he has changed your life or what he has done in your life to bring you to where you are. That's what Jesus is trying to get across to the disciples. Let's go. Let's start telling others about him. And so that's the message today is to go. Just go and do it. Obey what Jesus has said. You know, I, I told you that story about the chickens. That was a terrible Terrible night for me. Because I was outside with the other animals, the critters who loved chickens, in order to, to find all of our chickens that had escaped from that gate. But I have to tell you, in that moment that my father approached me and said, someone forgot to close the gate. I was trying to figure out in my own mind, how can I blame my sister for this Surely there's a way out. But there wasn't. It was solely my problem. And I took responsibility for it. But see, my dad gave me very specific directions on what to do. And in so many words, he was saying, just do it. I'd done it a million times before. Fed the chickens, made sure they had water, and close the gate on the way out. But for some reason, I forgot. And Jesus is giving us the same directions. He's saying, this doesn't just apply to the disciples, it applies to everyone. And he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, to him. God has given him the authority. The Holy Spirit is there. So, if he has all the authority, it must be important. It's kind of like when your dad tells you to do something, it's important. When your mom tells you to do something, it's really important. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And we could stop right there because that's what it's all about. It's telling everyone, all nations, everybody, everywhere, no matter who they are, or where they live, what circumstances in their past, it doesn't matter. God loves them just the same as he loves each one of us. But sometimes we forget that. So it's a great reminder. It's kind of like the instruction my dad gave. Go and feed the chickens. Go and feed the people the word of God, and tell them about Jesus. Make sure the chickens have water. Let's, let's get them baptized in the Holy Spirit. That outward experience, that outward acknowledgement that Christ is a part of their lives. And that we as a congregation and we as believers will support them 
in their love for Christ and in their understanding and to teach him. And then teach them to obey everything. Teach them just to close the gate. Make sure you close the gate. So today is about just do it. Do it. Go out and do what Jesus has told us to do. You know, on this day, as we celebrate those who have gave, given their life for us, we need to make sure we understand the reasons and why. So it's important to take pause and to remember those individuals. It's important to remember that most of those individuals who have given their lives in uniform were between 18 and 20 years old. They were just kids. Kids who had a dream, who had their whole life in front of them. And they said, this is important. I believe in freedom. I believe what that flag stands for. I believe that God is blessing our nation. That is why they died. And so we need to keep them all in mind on this day. So it asks that you understand this great commission. And it's pretty simple. Go. Go and do. Just get it done. Go and make disciples of Jesus Christ. That is our mission in the United Methodist Church. To go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. How many of you knew that? Oh, good. You know, I've been in churches where we said that every single Sunday. We began the worship service with the mission statement of the United Methodist Church. To keep us in focus and in mind of why we're here, not only to worship God, but also to transform people's lives. So just go and do it. That's my message for you this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you came to this earth, that you also paid the ultimate sacrifice by giving up your life for us. You told us you loved us, you cared for us, you didn't care what we have done. What was most important was that you loved us beyond what we could ever imagine. And so, Lord, we, we owe you a, an eternal debt of thanks. And one way we can honor you is by telling others and going out into the world and showing the love of Christ by our actions and our deeds and our words. And so, Lord, help us to do that. Help us to hear the words of the man in a hurry saying, just do it. So Lord, be with us as we leave here today. We remember and honor those who have given their lives for our freedoms. We honor and remember those who have gone before us, who have said, this nation, this flag is important. So Lord, as we leave here today, help us to never forget and help us always to be going out and spreading your love and your grace and your mercy to every single person that we come in contact with. We say this in your precious name. Amen. If you please stand and join me for Rescue the Perishing.
So did you see how important it was to carry the light of Christ out into this world? The flame went out, but they lit it again. And they kept doing that as they walked out. What a blessing. God said, whom shall I send and who shall go for us? And Isaiah said, here am I, send me. So life-giving God, free us from our fear, fill us with your love, and send us forth in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen and amen.